Good morning everybody, welcome to Thursday. It's not Thursday, it's Tuesday. Tuesday? I think it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday, but, saving myself, in today's passage in the Bible we are on Thursday. That's what I meant, obviously. Um, but yeah, we're building up to the big event in the life of Jesus. Um, we're in what uh, the church calls Holy Week, uh, where we look at the events in the week that leads up to Jesus' death. And um, I like to think of today's passage as a bit of an origin story. I love an origin story. Um, you know, superheroes, how they became super. I watched um, Morning Nick. I watched the Black Widow film on the weekend, um, which is like the origin of the Black Widow, the superhero in the Avengers. And it's a great film. Um, love an origin story. Love to know where people come from. And this is an origin story of um, something that we do in church, um, something that you've probably done in a church. Uh, whether you're a regular church attendee or not. Um, and it's something that's sometimes called the Communion, uh, Eucharist, uh, Lord's Supper, Last Supper, um, probably all sorts of other things that I can't think of. Um, but yeah, we do it in church quite regularly. Um, and it can look a bit different in different churches. Some have real bread, some have wafers, some have real wine, some have squash, um, some have the special non-alcoholic wine that you can buy from the special church catalogue. Um, but they all do it for the same reason. And the reason is this origin story from today. Um, I'm not going to read it, but you can find it in Mark 14, chapter... Yeah, chapter 14. Oh dear, my words are not good this morning. Chapter 14, verses 12 through to 26. Um, and yeah, what's interesting... Well, there's a few interesting things. Um, but the interesting thing at the beginning is the disciples are wandering around. They're like, oh dear, it is the Feast of the Passover, Passover which is like the most important festival for Jews. And we're here with this great Jewish leader called Jesus and we haven't planned anything. They're like, ooh, this is going to be awkward. Everyone's got to celebrate this. We haven't got anything sorted. We're in Jerusalem, which is like where everybody went to celebrate the Passover. Uh, so there was, you know, triple the number of people that would normally be in Jerusalem were in there now. So how on earth were they going to find uh, anything, let alone a room, to celebrate the Passover in? Um, now the part of it was important because it helped them remember uh, when God freed them from Egypt. So a long time ago in the Old Testament, uh, God's people were enslaved by Egyptians and God used a guy called Moses to help them uh, escape. And one of the things he did is they had to kill a lamb and paint the blood of the lamb on their doorframe and that meant that their firstborn sons wouldn't die in like a whole set of plagues that God had planned to persuade Pharaoh that he needed to let them out. So they always celebrate the Passover because it's when God's um, spirit of death passed over them um, and let them be free and then facilitated the freedom from the slavery in Egypt. History of the Passover then. Um, but they needed to celebrate it. It was like really important for Jews. They celebrated it and the disciples hadn't planned anything. But then at the beginning of this chunk, Jesus says to them, hey guys, like, what are you stressing about? Like, I got it all sorted. Go into the town, look for the man carrying the water jar, which, by the way, would have been really weird because only women carried water jars. Follow him, which would have been weird. Um, and then when you get to where he's going, say to that person, um, the master has a house, uh, a room here. Can you get it ready? And the disciples are like, yeah, cool. OK, we'll do that. And um, the important thing is, I think it's verse 16. Let me just check. Yeah, it says... Um, yeah, verse 16, the disciples left, went into the city and found things just as Jesus had told them. Um, you know, Jesus had a plan. This is all part of Jesus's plan. This is all part of God's plan. Um, and even these little details were part of Jesus's plan. And one of the things that encourages me about that is that Jesus does care about the little details. Um, you know, sometimes in my, when I'm praying, I'm like, oh, <laughs> there's like famine and war and things going on. Does God really care about this little thing that's important to me? Yeah, he does. Like, he cared about the, the details of booking a room um, and having a table ready for the Passover and having the food that they needed for the Passover. He cared about that. And he cares about the stuff that we care about too, um, which I kind of love. But yeah, anyway, they go in, they sit down, they're celebrating the Passover. You know, it's all good. Yay, God saved us. Like, happy celebration. And then Jesus starts talking about betrayal. Um, and suddenly there's a shadow over the celebration. And, you know, when we celebrate... The communion or the Eucharist or whatever you've seen it called, there is a shadow over that too and that shadow is human sin, uh, the stuff that humans have done wrong um, and you know all the disciples are like it's not me, it's not me um, and we know from the previous passage don't we that Judas is the one who's portrayed Jesus uh, but the other disciples don't know that 
And ultimately, if you read on through Mark's Gospel and some of the other Gospels and into the New Testament, you'll find that all the disciples desert Jesus um, in his final weeks. You know, you, we don't find any of them at the foot of the cross. We don't find any of them getting killed alongside him. Um, they all sort of betray him. Um, and we all do too. We all mess up. We all sin. We all do stuff wrong. We all betray Jesus. And that shadow is cast over this celebration. But the good news is then when we get to the bit about the bread and the wine is that Jesus says that that's his body. Um, symbolically for the Jews, the bread usually meant um, uh, the, the place of Egypt and how that was broken. And, and Jesus is saying, well, now I am broken. I am broken for you. I take on that suffering that you did um, so that you don't have to suffer anymore. And the same with the wine. It talks about his blood being poured out and that's our, um, our suffering that we deserve, that he takes for us. Um, and all the way through this passage, he's kind of proving that he's God by prophesying. You know, he prophesies that the room would be ready, and it was. And then he prophesies that someone's going to betray him, and Judas does. And then ultimately at the end there, he's prophesying that he will die, but he will die with a purpose. And that purpose is to free us, not from Egypt, not from slavery, but from our own sin um, and from our own, um, our own punishment that we deserve for that.